So this is the data set from the the scans we done the other day. Um, as you know, we only done one scan in color. So you know, just give you an idea. Basically, you know, it would kind of look a little bit like this if we've done the whole thing in color. However, you know, we done we turned the color off. So <clears throat> what we can do is um, in our point clouds tab, I've got it in true color at the moment, and I can change it to any one of these. Scan color will show me each um, each of the individual scans. However, I just took it as an LAS. It basically comes in as one point cloud regions color code intensity value and it's a, a, bit, a, a bit better to see it in that. Another one that's actually quite handy as well is this colour by elevation. You can change that but it shows up the stock piles and that pretty well as, as well. Even if you were just manually getting around them you can quite clearly see where the edges are as it drops off with the, 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 the difference in elevations. One of the features we can do is um, we can use this extract classified uh, point cloud regions. Now you may not need to do this, but it might be handy just to separate some of your data out um, if you're going to create surfaces from um, some from different things. So it's pretty good at removing noise. So if you have a lot of loaders and things going up and down here or around the stockpile or um, you know stuff that it, it could affect your surface if you were creating a if you were going to create a surface from it, you can um, basically um, get the software to automatically classify it. So basically, it's going to separate it out almost sep like separating out in the layers. So you've got ground stairs, vegetation, noise, and things like that, and they classify. And then you've got um, at the end you can do this. It's like a refinement. It basically looks through it again, almost like a double tape take. So uh, just to demonstrate this, um, there's outdoor, there's indoor, and um, there's outdoor um, aerial as well. So if you're using your drone stuff, you can get it to separate out the ground from the buildings, from vegetation and stuff, and you can turn those layers on and off. Basically, um, it's good for removing vegetation. Um, I'm going to use the, the terrestrial one obviously for this, um, pick this point cloud um, and I just want it basically to extract the ground and um, any medium high vegetation and uh, noise and just get it to run that classification. It depends on the size of your data set, um, you'll probably find that the there's probably more points in the aerial stuff actually than the um maybe actually more points in the terrestrial stuff than the aerial just with the, with the spatial like your resolution but you know it can take anywhere from you know a couple of minutes to 20 minutes half an hour you know depending on the size of your data set so um, now that that's complete um it's basically we're on our region color so we're viewing these by regions and in the view filter manager under point cloud regions, it's basically split them up. So we've, we've now got um, regions for, uh, let's turn them off. So any medium vegetation, if there is any, so there's there's not a lot on this site. So basically some small bushes there, uh, high vegetation. I don't think there is anything, I think, I think it's low. Um, the ground and uh, noise. So things like your vehicle here people moving around, um, things like this machinery. So it automatically actually automatically uh, recognises things that basically um, don't look like anything else and removes that from the software. Now, you, you know, you might get things like this, where it does pick up, works well in high street environments, so it might pick up things like some of the walls, stuff like that, it might not have put them, but it does pretty well at removing lots of, uh, lots of noisy data uh, that you, you're, not, you're not interested in. Um, and it's easy enough basically just to, to put that back in. So if this information over here is there's bits of excavator and stuff, but if this information here isn't noise, um you, you can basically go around, select that, and you have the option here to add it to a region. And we can add it to the the ground if we think that's part of the ground. Select that. <clears throat> and it'll just add that back in there. So yeah, so we can quickly remove any of this stuff just to clean up the data if need be. And um, if I close to that, and I'm going to turn that one off and that one off. Basically just turn on my ground now. So now we've basically just got our, our ground scan with any other information uh, cleaned out of it. 
So traditionally in TBC, uh, if we were looking at these stock piles here, what we've done was um, put into the plan view. Maybe just um, give that elevation again. Let's stand out a little bit more. And um, we could, in our, our surfaces, <clears throat> we would create a surface, but we would probably want to create a surface boundary. If we've got any, any CAD tools, um, polyline, I can give it a name. It doesn't matter if it needs an elevation. And I could just basically, you know, we're just going to do it very rough here, but just uh, trace around it. You can just tell it to automatically close it off. And then what I want to do is I want to basically I'm going to create a a, a surface, and it may be an idea actually to to use this and uh, create a separate region out of that, and then create a surface, or you could just create a surface for um, you know everything that's within this data set. What I might actually do first, just to uh, uh, just to speed things up, is <clears throat> I'll actually. Um, just strip this in there, create a new region out of it, so I'm not having to take too long generating the surface. So if I select this area and if I go to point clouds, I'm going to create a region, I'll just call it uh, stockpile one. off the ground then I'm just working with this area here and again like I said what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and go to uh, surfaces I'm going to create a surface Just going to compute the uh, uh, surface uh, based on that point cloud. So now it's computed that surface. <coughs> I'm just going to create a surface boundary. Boundaries to add this one here. Add that and I'm just going to recompute it based on that boundary. So now it's computed this uh, surface, and it's not actually a 3D line we've drawn around, we've just drawn it in 2D. It doesn't need to be a, a 3D line. Um, basically, it will just uh, extrude the, uh, the, the, the surface that it creates all the way out, basically, until it hits what would be the boundary of that, that line. So you're not having to draw it in 3D all the way around it. Um, and then um, it would just be a case of doing a, an airforce report. <clears throat> you can do stockpile depression. Um, pick your surface, it's a stockpile. Um, uh, the surface uh, boundary, don't actually need one um, to be honest. Um, you can you can add materials and things like that, but if you're just doing it,
So that probably took about five minutes there, uh, just to basically compute that top surface again, and then compute the bottom surface, and then do the comparison. <clears throat> it basically spits it out in this uh, this report here. So the stockpile surface, approximate volume. Um, if it can find any depression in that, usually nothing. Um, approximate areas. Um, total for the areas um, gives you a kind of depth summary as well. Basically, what the what the, the height of the stockpile itself is. Um, so it gives you this little report. So that's the kind of um, probably the way of doing it uh, previously. It just takes a wee bit of time sometimes with the, the processing of it. It's obviously a very complex uh, uh, surface. Um, if you were to look at the, the the triangles on it, you can actually turn that on in the properties. You can look at the view. So it's pretty complex. We can change the complex of these down and get them to break it down a little bit. One of the other ways you can do that as well, actually, is in the point cloud, is to, um, is to sample the region. So basically that's going to reduce the amount of points that you've collected. So <clears throat> you could cut around it and then change the sampling and say, I only want to see a point every centimetre or two, five centimetres, whatever it is. And it will just uh, reduce the density of this and it makes it a wee bit quicker, um, quicker to work with. Uh, so I'm going to turn that um, off and just get rid of that. Back to the old. I can go into this uh, project explorer. It shows me things I've created, like my surfaces. I'm just going to remove these um, that I've created. Just get rid of that. Um, if I'd deleted that boundary, but then we computed the surface. Um, it's in the layers. You can turn it on and off. So I'll just turn on the. Uh, the ground again, and uh, actually that that stop power there, because we've changed the regions. So, um, in the extract uh, stop pill feature, let's jump the plan view. So this is a relatively new feature. This extract uh, uh, stop pills. It, it comes along with other things like extract line features for if you're doing topographic surveys like curves and things, and uh, post poles. Um, extract geometry, common geometry features, you can extract them. Um, there's basically a lot of features in here for extracting points and things for surveys. This, this uh, extract stop here. So if you, um, you've got two options here, basically create your boundary, extract a new boundary, or extract uh, an existing boundary, if you already have one created. If we're just going to do a new boundary here, um, it's asking to pick a point. Somewhere on the stockpile, um, maximum stockpile size, it just makes the box bigger. Apparently, you're supposed to make it kind of double the size of the one that you already have, if possible. Ground flatness, I think the lower the value, um, if it's pretty flat, it's just for recognising what's flat ground and what's part of the stockpile. It was pretty flat um, around about here, so we'll run that and then we'll, we'll hit the extract boundary and see if we can find the boundary for this stockpile. So after about 30 seconds, it basically creates this boundary. Um, and if you're not happy with it, you can go in here and basically uh, change some of these settings, like the ground flatness. Um, but you know, it doesn't look, doesn't look too bad, this, uh, to be honest with you, kind of follows it around reasonably well. So <clears throat> once you've done that, you can give your uh, stockpile a name. Stockpile one, you can add it onto a layer. Um, we don't have a layer, we can create a new layer. It's basically just uh, to put our boundaries on. Stop pills. And then we can add, and it'll add that stop pile in to this list here. So it's not calculated anything at the moment. If we want to do this for the other one, uh, we can go along here, we can uh, pick a point, go with the same, and extract boundary. It's probably about 20 seconds just to do that there. And again, you can go in and you can check this, uh, check you're happy with this uh, boundary. If you're happy, stop pile two, we'll put it in that layer uh, and we'll hit add. And we would go around and basically add in further stop piles, um, as many as we had in here. Um, it's not calculated anything. You can create your own initial surface. So maybe you had a survey around the bottom or something. Um, that you could create that in a, a bottom surface um, or it had been previously surveyed basically or your previous data before the stockpile was there you could use that to create an initial surface otherwise it's basically just going to create it straight across this boundary here so for this we're going to use create from boundary 
both stockpiles, and then we're just going to hit calculate volumes. Um, and that was actually a lot quicker, to be honest. That only took a minute and a half to run the two of these, uh, create the two of these stockpiles. Um, and you'll see here that it gives us the, the, the area of the base um, that created, and then the slope area, and then the volume for both of them. And then it's a case of just hitting uh, create report. Just gives us a little report here, basically that information of what the volume of each stockpile is. So you can see here that it's actually generated these surfaces if I turn it on and off. You can see here a pretty complex uh, surface that it's managed to create in pretty much no time. So these are the final surfaces, and you've got the initial ones basically that it's used um, underneath. Again, you'll see them in here in the Project Explorer, <clears throat> and we can delete and remove these out. Also under the Feature Extracting, it's uh, created these uh, two stockpiles as well.